What's up, guys? Welcome to your new and best podcast out there in the NRL. It's called Paradise. I am your co-host, Olan Tekas, joined by a man, Sean Lane. How are we, Sean? Good, mate. How are you? I'm good, man. Thank you for joining me on this couch. Are you looking forward to this journey that we're going to go on? Yeah, of course. Um, I think we've got six episodes this season, so it uh, should be a nice way to finish the year and allow the fans to meet some of the players and, most importantly, get to know Olin Tekas. Oh, no, they're not here for me, mate. They're here for you. They're here for our special guest who I'll be introducing later. And we will also have Kennedy Charrington joining us. She's in Origin Camp, so we wish her the best of luck. Um, I think I'm looking forward to everything that's going to happen here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think it'll be pretty good. Um, I don't know many other rugby league podcasts out there, but I think... That are good. Sorry, what? Oh, I think we're going to be <laughs> straight to the top, mate. Straight to the top. Mate look Johns, at, see you later. Look out for us on uh, Apple Podcasts and all the rest <laughs> of them. Laney, let's, uh, let's talk about your, your NRL journey and your life outside the footy. <clears throat> How did you, you know, what led you to the, the Paramount Eels? Um, for those well, that don't know, you know. Without going into too much depth, I was uh, played footy ever since I was five. Just kind of made my way through the junior reps um, I ended up debuting at the Canterbury Bulldogs and from there I kind of jumped around a few teams, mm -hmm. went to uh, New Zealand Warriors, uh, played for Manly Seagulls as well and then um, in 2018 I was signed by Parramatta for the 2019 season, went and had a, a chat to, to Brad and he said he liked how I played and the chat was actually in the car park at Old Sales Yards, which was Jeez. pretty funny. He had to sneak away in, from the In group. a car park? Yeah, What's yeah, very, very sus. Yeah, a little very bit. Very sus. Um, but yeah, it sounded good, what he what he had planned for the future. And um, yeah, I was straight on board. And um, ever since, been loving being in the, uh, the blue and yellow. I mean, blue and gold. Blue, yellow, blue and gold. Well, you had a, you had a <laughs> massive uh, you had a massive season last year. I mean, the fans, you know, you were probably are. One of our best players, if not our best player. Um, yep, you attributed yep. that to um, someone when you at the uh, at the. Are you gonna are you gonna elaborate on that? Attribute that to yeah. someone. Yeah. Do you remember the the, the speech <coughs> you gave? Yeah, I, I think many people, mate. You know, and there's not one person that is responsible for for my success last year. But yeah, I have plenty <laughs> of people that were with me along the journey, and um. It's it's a very long journey too, like I said, mate. You know, yeah, it's, it is it's a long it is, way. But is, no, the, the person you're thinking of is my, my missus. I think my missus. You know, yeah, so. yeah. No, I'm just I'm just giving you a shout out to G. Love you, babe. A, li a little bit of stick. Yeah, look, that's what I was looking for. You know, that's what I was looking I for. I know what you're doing, bro. It's <laughs> all right. I'm in a good book. But um, those of you that are wondering about my journey and why I came to support, you know, Power, I was actually, you know, I was in I was in between two clubs. I was in between uh, Bulldogs and. Power. Good choice. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I picked Power. Jesus Christ, I'd be absolutely miserable if I went for Bulldogs right about now. But um, Power is just, you know, down the road from me, 10 minutes from me, made more sense. And, uh, you know, shout out to Boko for, uh, you know, reeling me in there. So, and, and here we are. Now I'm, on a, now I'm on a podcast with, you know, one of the, some of the best looking guys in, <laughs> in the NRL. But that leads me on to our next segment, our special guest. Do you want to intro him? Probably one of the best looking guys in the NRL. Biceps yeah, for days. For sure, if there was a, if there was a sexiest man in the league, I'm, I'm pretty sure Ryan Manis would be up there. So He'd be up our there. very first guest of the inaugural episode of Paradise Podcast. Welcome, Ryan Madison. Thanks, boys. Yeah, no worries. Thanks yeah, for well, joining us. I'm excited to be the first guest on, on the potty. Yeah. But, um, how yeah. are you? Yeah, good, good. Yeah. yeah, we had a long day of training today. So, yeah, yeah finish it up with a podcast. Can't get much better than that. <laughs> how are you feeling uh, after the weekend, you know, playing 5-8? You know, did, did pretty well there. Yeah, you used back to play the there previously as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So I started most of my junior footy. Um, so I started playing like centre wing, like mm. back in the day. And then I just I needed the ball. I needed my hands on the ball. I was just yeah. So I went to the coach. I said I want to be in the halves. Mm. And he goes, Oh, okay. You know, you're a, kind of a string bean of a half, but we'll see how you go. And then yeah, I just kept playing, kept playing there, and then just grew. Ate all mum's food and she had no more food left I in the pantry. But from yeah. the <laughs> there you go. And to someone like me that's obviously new to the sport in terms of like positions, I'm still, you know, getting used to the certain positions and what they do and whatnot. What are the attributes that, uh, you know, like a 5'8 a needs compared to where you currently play? Like what are the differences? Yeah, well, um, when you play either six or seven, halfback or 5'8, you're, mo you're more required for fitness. Okay. So you're more running off the ball and you got to be organising more. You got to be thinking a few players ahead, and 
yeah, being out for a month on the weekend, coming back into that oh, yeah. position, I was like, oh, my calves are a mm. bit heavy, legs are getting heavy, lungs are <laughs> tight. Yeah, so cool, yeah. um, it was one of those one of those things that you just had to kind of get thrown in the deep end. But it was good. There was a few of the boys around me that got me through and Brad didn't really have a, a strict role that I had to play. It was more whatever I did at lock, just kind of transition that at, at, at five eight and just obviously think ahead a little bit and, and try and get the boys around the field. But yeah, it was good to get the win. Um, I was going to say, you obviously, you know, you keep in shape, you know, your, your chisels are probably, you're probably like 0% body fat, huh. you know, you're into your nutrition. Is this a normal thing or how, how did you go about this? Well, mate, you wouldn't believe it. There was this guy on TikTok. I'm, I'm, I'm was flicking, it me? I'm flicking through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Olin Tech is anyone out there on TikTok. He has a little nutrition little fact. I wish I did. And I jumped on that. No, um, to be honest, it's just, I like health. I like fitness. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I feel guilty if I don't follow what i normally do mm. so it's more of a, a disciplined habit of like not feeling guilty so yeah, yeah. i'm always trying to be better so yeah i just L laney you, are you a bit like that as well with diet what i think like? matto will attest to the fact that i'm definitely not like that <laughs> um i'm probably going the opposite way and i like to enjoy some foods and allow that to um yeah kind of brighten my day a little bit from time to time but yeah. obviously being a professional athlete you gotta because, be yeah, yeah I mean, pretty pretty strict i reckon we'd be you, more strict than you still can't yeah but you burn it off so it's all right you can <laughs> technically you can kind of eat chesh told me a little yeah. oh, a little secret about it she said like sometimes when there's maccas here like you want them to like you know go in and just see what tell you just describe the burger to you what's what's that about mate trust me there's so many weird things so like, when chesh will have maccas i'll go up and i said can I smell it? What does it taste like? Is it fresh? <laughs> it's but like, have, you, have you seen Dodgeball? Yeah. You know how he's got like the pizza waving in front of him oh, yeah, while yeah, he's yeah. trying to squat? That's what Mana does oh. in the gym. There's a few times there's <laughs> the, the nutritionist here at, at Para, she'll make banana bread each week oh, or yeah, every fortnight. And I'll go to Laney because mm. he, he's a very he's a very good connoisseur. He makes sure he knows everything. <laughs> he's a good critique. And I go, what does it taste like this week? And he's just... Yeah, yeah, a little bit dry, a little bit this. So <laughs> I just like to know. I like to know. So it kind of, because uh, see, my problem is like, instead of, I feel like that kills the hunger side of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. if you can, you know, when people watch people eat, you know, instead of like eating it, you're watching people eat. Like, does it kind of kill that yeah. side of actually having to eat it? As long as I get that little bit of a, bit of a whiff. Yeah. I'm satisfied. See, uh, so I, I might need to. guilt that follows exactly, afterwards. Yeah. Oh, the guilt Which is worse, isn't it? When you like tuck into like, Couple donuts. I mean, maybe that's me, but and you're just like afterwards, you're like, oh man, oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of um, calories eat, in the he gym. He does eat a lot of food though. If Do you've you? seen him eat? Yeah, yeah. He's the he like not many people out eat me, oh, but he's yeah. one person who uh -huh. if I go to dinner with, mm -hmm, you know, he's gonna be finishing my food. Oh no, I love that. I've, <laughs> do, do you know what I was gonna say? I was gonna throw you on the bus here that I've been uh, I've been friendsed by a couple of girls because of you. So <laughs> just so you know, what was this? Yeah, so 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 I might be. Chatting to a girl or whatever, right? And then, or 10. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 10. Did you say 10? I wish it was 10. So just say I'm just conversing. Not even, not even chatting. Just say I'm conversing, right? Yeah, just yeah. General yeah, yeah, like, yeah, of oh, course. Right, you support, oh, support Para, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll do a little bit of work with Para. Oh, yeah. Do you know that guy, Madison? I'm like, oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, he plays for the Eels. He's like, well, can you get me to... That's happened with like three girls. I'm just like, bro, like, what? I, I how thought, am I... What happened with us? I thought we were a thing. I mean, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, mate. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you know, so does it, the ladies, you're single. You know, what's the, what's the deal there? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely single. I'm definitely single. Um, but yeah, I'm just cruising along, cruising along, <laughs> just, just yeah. cruising along. Yeah. Do you have a type? Um, yeah. I'll <laughs> So what you tell us? <laughs> ladies What's holding back, you? ladies holding back. <laughs> my love life is oh. talk topic in the in the dressing room. Okay, um, no, I love it. People would say that I'm on the picky side, but <laughs> not on the, not There's really, nothing wrong with being picky. Not on appearance. It's okay. more selective. He's selective just, but you on have to be. yeah. They're going to be health orientated. Um, I'm very religious, so obviously mm -hmm. faith values. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, just good, decent girl. Tick, yeah. tick, tick. Any yeah. girls that are listening to this, just slide up in there. If you've got <laughs> those, you know, if you're ticking all those boxes, why not? What's his actual type, bro? You must oh, he has though. a he has a long list of things. What else is so on? There? What's are, on there? What's on there that, 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 that you had to say? Those are several things yeah. that uh, I think he knows what he wants though, and he knows what's going to work for him in, in a relationship. And um, being a strong, independent man, he's he needs someone who's going to come in and add value to his life and be able to cooperate with him. And uh, that's what relationships are all about, mate. And if you need relationship counselling, hey, listen, I'm, I'll be other. talking to you. I'll be calling you. Out <laughs> one, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. I just got out of one. So, um, but like life Congrats outside, um, 
<laughs> Congrats. You know, you're crying at night. <laughs> Listen to Drake late at night, getting through it. Um, I was going to say life outside, you know, footy. Um, what are your interests, you know, what do, what don't people kind of know about Ryan Madsen? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a very simple bloke. So mm. like the sun, um, mm. as long as the sun's out and I'm down at the beach in my speedos, um, I'm kind of set. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not only that though, like you plan your day around <laughs> being in the sun. Really? Oh, that's yeah, really nice. I do, I do, I do. Yeah. Definitely. Um, if the sun's out, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm shuffling things, I'm rearranging really? things, I'm making sure so that you can catch that sun. Yeah, you got to. You got to get that. Yeah. Get you guys too late. Like if you came here at lunchtime, he was out there getting a tan. Oh like, really? So you come in here, you get a little tan, and then you know maybe before or after training, you get a little tan on, and I then try my best, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I like that. I like that. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, coming back from injury. Now, you're obviously coming back from injury as well. I want you lads to kind of, you know, chime in on that. How's it been coming back from injury for you? And obviously you're in the process of it, Laney. <clears throat> it's been good, especially having Laney there. Like rehab can be a, a very lonely place. And mm. obviously seeing the boys out there and obviously you can't be training with the, the main squad. So when you have rehab, you're on the, another field and the morale's a little bit down. So you just mm. do things just to boost each other up. And mm. um, Laney and I have been having a good old time. In, uh, yeah, in rehab yeah. it's good when you got some mates in the rehab crew unfortunately for the team <laughs> yeah. but it's nice like for you personally it's good to have someone there to be able to have a chat with and um just kind of brighten your day a little bit more because rehab the rehab process is, is quite strenuous and yeah. um very monotonous too a lot of the time mm -hmm. where you're doing just very boring things but it's it's necessary and required for you for you to tick off all the boxes gradually and then Get back out on the field eventually, but um, I guess it makes you miss playing more oh, more than ever than it's when a, you're um, on. It's hard to because I used to play professionally, you know, at a certain level. And oh, did you? Yeah, you know, you know, back in not back in the day, you know, a couple of years ago, but um, the the injury process, I feel like your your mental health kind of just it deteriorates because you place your value on you know how good you're playing. Sometimes, do you guys, you know, did that happen to you guys at all? Well, as I've gotten older and, and wiser, um, I guess I, I've tried to get away from uh, completely valuing football as the, the most yeah. important thing in my life. Yeah, 100%. And so I, I think that's it's beneficial for when you go through those hard times. 100%. You, you, need, uh, you need a good support network of, of people around you and uh, family and friends and things like that and hobbies uh, to kind of be able to have something to fall back on it when when things are, are going bad with footy and um, when things are, are flying high then and then it's all good but mm -hmm. um, life always has its peaks and its valleys you know so it's all about uh, preparing yourself for for the valley. We get some gems from Laney today. Oh already. mate, um, is this a, the closing thought is just constantly throughout the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, so there's, there's no closing. It's just the whole no, thing. Yeah, the whole we're, thing we're, we're inspiring up <laughs> the whole of Parramatta. Right? Just what, philosophy. What about, um, <laughs> what about you, um, Matter? <laughs> I'll go off the back of Laney, like yeah. it can be such like a um, an identity crisis when you finish rugby league and if you've set your heart on, I am Sean Lane, the rugby league player, yeah. Olin Tech is a soccer player, yeah. it can just go like that straight yeah. away. And you can see a few of the, the former greats of rugby league, they try and hold on to their identity and you get lost. Mm -hmm. And that's when mental health, depression, all that stuff comes in. And that's why Laney and I are in, in a space that we, we, we know that what we want to transition, transition to after rugby league. And um, so myself, I've kind of laid a platform that um, I've got a disability business that I run mm -hmm. outside of rugby Amazing. league. Um, I'm studying a little bit of psychology as Laney is now. Um, Do you know I actually have a degree in psychology? Do you actually? Yeah. What type not, of a lot, not a lot of people know this. A bachelor's of Science. Degree? Bachelor's of Science. <laughs> Wheat mix <laughs> degree. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this guy actually thinks I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Where'd you get it? So I, I, I lived in America. I look, uh, got it in America, but you know, they say degrees are easy in America, but you know. No, that's good, man. How long did you study for? Like four years. Yeah, wow. No, yeah, that's yeah, impressive, yeah. man. I'm a man that's of, impressive. You know, I've lived many lives, so. Wow. Well, what was college campus like, bro? College campus life was exactly like the movies. And I was even at a small, smaller college. Like yeah, I wasn't right. even, um, I was in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, small college, is it? It was not North Carolina, a college in North Carolina. Oh, okay, yeah. It's called yeah. Uh, University of Mount Olive, but it was like a near Raleigh, like two hours from like an actual big city. Mm. But it was still, you know, Parties going off, yeah. American yeah. American life's just just crazy. Is it hard to study knowing that there's always these parties? Yeah, but it's that? it's almost it's, it becomes easy because you're with 
your teammates all the time. So you yeah. room with your teammates, you know, you go to eat with your teammates. So it's almost like you do everything together. Yeah. So they kind of like hold you accountable. You know what I mean? You'll get up, even if you go out late the next night, like your, your roommate's waking you up for training. Like, yo, we've got training in 20 minutes. So it's like, no, you've always got people to hold you accountable. If you're just doing it like by yourself, it would have been like- So you got harder. study yeah. and then you obviously you had soccer, so football. Yeah. But then where do you prioritize the study? So the studying comes first. If you can't, if you're not, making a certain grade, you can't even play. Really? Yeah, if you don't make above, I think it was above like a C in like all your classes, you can't play. Yeah, they've changed it in NFL and football over there too, in the college, I think, so. Yeah. But I think I'll, they can get paid now, and I'm not sure. But they yeah, they get paid, um, yes, endorsement deals and things like that, I think, in, in college now. But yeah. some of the NFL athletes who are coming through the colleges, they're actually the best students also, mm -hmm. because they have um, such strenuous rules around the marks that they need to maintain. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. the college doesn't let them play. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, pr it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy. And then it's like, the only 1% really make it to go on and play like professional after that. So yeah. in even NFL and basketballs, so much harder, but it's a great experience, man. I reckon I'd recommend it to anyone that's like young, like 16, 17, you in playing out playing, of high school, out of high school, and they're playing soccer or football. Uh, I'd say definitely, like, there's no reason why not to. You know, you get a full year education. So after that, you went back home. After that, I went to play in Holland. Then I went to play in Italy. Then I went back home. Oh man, what a life! Uh, I've, uh, I've lived a life. I tell you, man. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm uh, 28. 28. Oh, yeah. yeah. So where's Tickers? Where's that come in? So Olan Tickers comes in underneath the coach. Yeah. So it's funny. So I, so I stopped playing or like didn't got the contract. I got um wasn't getting paid, and then started my own coaching business. And then from that coaching business, that's when I started up making videos. Ah, and then just, just football. Videos. Just football videos to start with. Literally just football, pure football videos. They started going viral in like I don't know, early COVID times. And then one day I just said, Ah, oh, what NRL NRL team should I pick? And then. Yeah. So were you doing like educational soccer? Yeah. 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 yeah coaching, like mostly telling people how to like strike the ball, telling people how to like defend 1v1. Um, they're playing different positions, all stuff that I did myself to get to that kind of level. Yeah. Um, still talk to those kids that I used to coach, still like kind of mentor them in a way. But yeah, just not coaching all the time now. I used to, I used to be up at like 5 a.m. Yeah. Up at 5 a.m. driving to St. Leonard's. Session starts at like 6 a.m. So yeah, it would be, it'd be. Tough grind every single day. Oh, wow. Do like five, six sessions a day. That's one positive though about being an athlete is it teaches you that discipline. Hey? Oh yeah, you just you don't even you don't even think about it. You just go, all right, this is it. This is what I'm doing. I'm getting up. This is what I'm doing. You know, and you're kind of like don't really you're not really scared to fail if you if you become an athlete. You like you just try stuff anyway because being an athlete you just have to. You, there's a higher chance that you're going to fail than succeed. So you just you know you just try it. anyway. That's enough about me. Let's go on to the uh, the fan segment. We've got some fan questions for uh, Ryan Madison. Uh, what's the craziest interaction you've had with a fan? You can answer it as well, Lainey, because obviously you've had some, probably had some interactions. What's the craziest on interaction? The, on the weekend, there was, a, there was an old fella. He threw his beanie at me. And then I looked up to see who threw the beanie and he was waving at me. I went to go pick the beanie up and he's got his t-shirt off and it was so cold on the weekend. <laughs> and he's waving it, waving it around and he, I was signing his thing. I think Bocco got it on film. <laughs> And I'm just like, the dedication on him, like, <laughs> yeah. not only is he that old, he's going to drop dead, but... <laughs> to get your attention. Oh, hopefully not. Hope I, you're all right, mate. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. It was just, that's how much football means to people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's a win. Especially the Eels as well. Man. Yeah, Eels, a win. I've been... Like, I couldn't I've, believe it. I've been in... Where did I go? I was in Perth. Um, and I was doing some shoots on content for the UFC, and the amount of people that came up to me were like, yo, I'm an Eels fan. Like, I love your stuff. And I'm like, I mean bloody perth here i'm not really expecting it so yeah there are they're scattered everywhere man yeah, they're yeah. really passionate oh, i will, I will say that yeah eels, there's so many eels fans everywhere you go mate like you go out for dinner for drinks whatever it doesn't matter like people always come up to you ask for mm. a photo eels fans everywhere overseas i'd imagine too yeah passionate too oh 100 percent. i'll tell you too love the, love the fan base so what about you laney what's the craziest interaction that you craziest doing? interaction um can't think of one off the top of my head. I just, I just remember after last season playing in the grand final, and then um, I've gone out with some friends and stuff the following weeks after that, and everyone just recognised everywhere I went. Oh. I think I went tried to go to the races, and I would have taken like two hundred photos just on. I know you feel me. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But the the, the hardest thing is Reed Marnie was also there. 
Oh, but, so it's both of you together. But, but Reed Marnie's blended in with the crowd. Because <laughs> he's about five foot two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no one could really see him. I'm like You're well like head above dog. the crowd. I'm seeing everyone. And then I see them. I'm just peering around. And then people just like lock eyes with me naturally because you're just inclined to look at people's yeah. eyes. And then I have to. Um, who's the most annoying teammate? Matter. You're going to throw anyone under the bus? It'll be interesting because we're going to ask like when we interview other people. They're gonna yeah, say yeah, yeah. Um, well, I reckon people would be saying me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I reckon they will, but... Why are you talking the list? <laughs> every time, it always comes up. It always comes up. They always say me. I don't know if it's... I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, can, I can see that people would... Um, or they say he's the biggest pest, but I don't think Matto is annoying. I think yeah. Matto brings good energy and he, plenty of laughs stuff. from uh, his antics, but um, and no one's really like that annoying. People call out your name and like just look away and stuff like that. Yeah. There's no real... Who would you reckon is the most annoying? Most annoying. Oh, I've, probably for me, it's Reg because <laughs> I can't get through a gym session without him punching me like 20 times. Oh, really? or, like, yeah. Oi, all Oi, the time. Like on. every time I walk past him and, and like I'm flinching obviously because <laughs> yeah, he hits me like <laughs> most really of the time. Punch, yeah. I'm like, bro. Oh, it's not yeah. even like a little, hey, how nah. you doing? It's like, no, nah, no. Nah. He winds up and he, yeah, wow. Or like, <laughs> like he knows yeah. that you've got, let's say a sore neck, for example, like you can still cop a knock and it's just going to be a bit sore, but mm. it's not going to make the injury worse. He'll go around chopping your neck. <laughs> what a guy. He'll go around chopping your neck. He's got yeah. some big hands too. Oh, He's got boy. some big hands. Yeah, yeah, um, next one is <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any pre-game rituals? Um, Everyone loves that. I used to be weird. I used to wear the same pair of undies mm. every single game. Okay. And then I remember when the, like, the Auckland Nines was going on, mm. because I had this superstition, I had to wear the same undies. And what, you have like six, seven games in two days. Oh, Lord. I, went, I, I hope you was washing them. I'm wearing the same undies. Wow. Are you yeah. washing? No, I didn't. <laughs> you can't wash <laughs> in between games. No, you're so, showering so, them. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm wearing them. You're I'm showering them. Oh, you know. Until yeah. 2018 grand final. Okay. I'm in the, I'm in the, the, oh, the hotel room. Anyway, we're about to go, about to leave. I'm searching my bag. I can't find the undies. I'm like, no, this is probably the worst game. You can possibly not bring on game day undies. Going through, going through, I'm stressing. I remember my roommate and I was asking me, what's wrong? And I just took a big breath. I was like, nothing. <laughs> and I said to myself, I had to say to myself, I train nearly every day. I don't wear these undies. Like I'm going to be fine. You have to psychologically. Yeah, and then now I don't, yeah. So I wear any undies now. Them undies yeah. anymore. No. You still have them? No. Nah. No, they no. weren't the ones in the sheds the other day. Well, you know me, most of mine have holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say they got a pretty big hole in them. <laughs> uh, oh, so uh, we're just going to ask about, you know, who do you listen to? Who's your favorite artist? I'd be interested to get yours. I feel like you can tell a lot about the person's, like, you know, what kind of music they're uh, My into. favorite artist, I'm, I'm everywhere. So yeah. I've got the, um, obviously, my, my worship, my church music. Um, I like a bit of rapper like Drake. Um, then I would go real left hand, and I look kind of like opera music. Opera, I like, yeah. I like cooking to you like opera guy as well? classic music. <laughs> oh, cooking to classical music, classical music, bit of opera. Um, but then I like very cultured stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, like my Polynesian music. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, reggaeton, all that stuff. Oh, so. okay, bit of reggaeton. Okay. Training matter will chuck on the Polynesian music like straight away reggae and stuff like that and everyone's like who put this on Matto's singing so just, every just, word you just well he knows and, every word oh, and it's like get, I don't get, know what language they're speaking yeah. and stuff like that but he's like full knows exactly I need to get, we need to get a clip of you um, singing along to those, those tunes <laughs> <for> sure, <laughs> I think right? it's because because I'm I was brought up in an Australian house and there's not much culture going on in our house yeah. so whenever I'm with people I've just kind of latched onto their, uh, their yeah. culture and what they do do you like a bit of British rap yeah. Who'd you, who'd, you, who'd you go for? I, I like Stormzy. Oh, a bit of Storms? Okay, I like okay. Stormzy. Well, what about you, Lane? What'd you like? Um, what's the other fella? Stormzy, the Stormzy. Is That's not me. Skepta. Yeah, Skepta. Well, yeah, oh, Skepta. Skepta okay. is all right. He's Skepta's all right. decent. I just watched um, a documentary about Ed Sheeran. It's on Disney Plus. I think. Yeah, he was and all he, in that grime scene. Yeah, he was all around the, the grime scene. And I think Stormzy's in it and Skepta and stuff like that. The guy that found Ed Sheeran actually found all those blokes as well yeah, and like yeah, help yeah. them it's, like a, it's, it's a mad story I'll, I'll put you guys on some of the you know the underground yeah, I started listening to it UK. after that because it was on the Ed Sheeran docker so oh, I listened to a few oh, of them okay 
Yeah, but I also I think Love I saw Skepta at a festival or something yeah, a few sick, years back, and he, he was good, bro. He really, good. really good live artist. Good. That's what you're into. Yeah, I mean, I'm most I'm mostly British, you know, rap. You know, I hate to put typical, but yeah, it's because I kind of grew up listening. Right, to embrace those guys. it, bro. It's yeah, all good. I grew up listening to him, like yeah. when I was like 13, 14. I heard my first Skepta song, so yeah, yeah. just been following their journey throughout. Yeah. Um, we've come towards the end of the segment. We're gonna go to the thought train. And what I want to do first of all is thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share. Um, let us know what you want to see next. Let us know who you want on the chair next. Matter, you know, thank you for joining us. Thanks, mate. It's Great. been yeah, a pleasure. Yeah. First, yeah. first one out of the horses, you know. Done yeah, a really good. Boys, you know, there's a standards, <laughs> the standards up here now. <laughs> do you know, do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, any last thoughts from you, Laney? Yeah, well, this is the thought train. So every, every week we're going to close the podcast with uh, a thought of mine. Um, I sat up last night thinking about it and then, I couldn't really come up with anything and I was I was thinking about my week ahead and I was like, oh, Origins on this week. So we got uh, Junior and Mitch in that one. We got Kennedy as well in the Ooh, women's. I yes, think they're on yes, Thursday, yes. are they? Yeah, yeah, they're on Thursday. So wish all of them luck and I'm a proud New South Welshman. Same. So um, <laughs> my thought, it's going to be a prediction. I'm going to say New South Wales by eight and I'm going to say Mitchell oh. Moses, man of the match. Oh. Yep. Well, we're believing and we're wishing, man. 100%. 100%. 100%. You got this, Mitchie. We'll see you guys next week or the week afterwards.